Barbell Junction. <laughs> oh my god. Asal boleh bulat dah lupa dah. Asal tak boleh lupa. Continue. Uh, Assalamualaikum and hi. Welcome to this week's edition of uh, Barbell Junction. Today uh, we have uh, for the very first time we have a returning guest. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. It's, me. It's, me. Yeah. It's, me. It's, me. it's me. Mr. Luke Lango. And surprise, surprise, he uh, brought along a friend, Dr. Doctor. Arvin. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So uh, today we're going to just continue about uh, Luke's journey. Um, Into injuries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> getting, a be- um, how do you say? Uh, getting over his injuries yeah. and yeah. Coming, coming back to the sport. Getting over life. I think uh, this, uh, this episode is more to like the care, the caring, oh, sorry, caring, the rehab. The rehab after yeah. getting any injury in general, so mm. yeah. which is why I invited uh, my friend Dr. Arvin to actually um, give his uh, professional advice on the matter, mm. so that pe- the people listening uh, aren't just gonna say that we're just yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So um, I think we left off t- where your butt got torn. sliced, torn, yeah. torn, torn butt, yeah. torn butt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, Sure so, so on, uh, yeah. How you tore your butt? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe we should we should rehash a bit, right? Yeah. So why don't uh, while I'm like gathering my thoughts, uh, Arvin can uh, Dr. Arvin can introduce himself. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Doc. This okay. Is, go um, ahead. Anyway, I'm um, Dr. Arvin. Uh, well, in this show, you guys are gonna call me Arvin. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm okay. a I'm a training sports physician, and I'm also a strength and conditioning specialist as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's why I guess it's appropriate for me to be here, simply because uh, we are talking about injuries and being a strength and conditioning specialist and a physician at the yeah. same time, I guess I can understand the things you guys go through mm. and let's see how we can help uh, yeah. answering some questions. Right. Um, before that, um, just make sure that you guys are close to the mic so that... All oh, right, I totally yeah. forgot about that. Um, so, how, how did you guys close, meet, guys, by the way? It's through the CSCS course. Yeah, we actually went for the... Six-day course? Yeah. Six-day mm. course. No, actually, before that, I met Luke. He was a little cutting in my office. Mm. There's, wow. a, there's an article about Luke Lango, which was half this size. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, many, many years ago. Then I looked at that, I looked at this, I was like, what happened in between? <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you have Volume. that picture of him? No, it was like, because we have like little cuttings of uh, newspaper cuttings. Right. And Luke was one of it in our office. Mm. Oh, so like for no a- apparent why? reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was, it <laughs> it was, was just on the wall. It was, uh, it was no, it wasn't his picture alone. I mean, I guess they interviewed the group? Yeah, the article. Okay. Yeah, it was a newspaper article um, that was about health and fitness, mm. about getting pe- more people into that um, lifestyle kind of thing. So mm. it was just a small interview. So then you would guess went to the what course was that? CS. Yes, yes, yes. yes what yes, is yes. that? Mm. So basically, that's a, a National Strength and Conditioning Association uh, exam, which is uh, you become a strength and conditioning specialist. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's why they call it CSCS. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, if you had, I would say, if you had a physical trainer, yeah, uh, that is the highest level. Mm. The person yeah. is the the person that actually can actually run an entire gym, yeah, and coordinates the entire thing. Uh, and he's basically the bridge between, or he or she is basically yeah. the bridge between an athletic trainer. And a sports physician. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually, mm. I think we need more of that here. Yeah. So, Hopefully. kind of like if uh, to put things into perspective, is that if you are currently treating an uh, treating uh, coaching an athlete, your athlete sustains an injury during his sport, that said athlete will visit the physician. The physician, the physician in turn will actually communicate to the coach, and say that okay, currently your athlete has sustained uh, this particular injury. Uh, be more mindful of movements he cannot do and then he starts to sp- tell the, the coach about exactly what he can and cannot do and then the coach would make, make the program based off what the doctor said. So they work as a team mm. to ensure that the athlete is able to recover as quickly as possible and back into his sport. Mm. Wait, is this referring to the CSCS or? Yeah. The CSCS coach. CSCS yeah. coach. Oh, okay, so the coach is, is a bridge. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And what, it's a six-day course? It's, it, it's a six day like a crash course, crash course. Mm-hmm. but it takes you at least three months to study, to for, study it. for it right. three months for him i'm still i'm still oh, like okay. i'm still in the, the book process. because i uh, at the time i was also finishing up my study so getting to finish that book was a bit hard so but i'm taking the exam in three months time so mm. so when you sign up they give you the materials and then when you want to do the exam you have to go to the six day thing at the end of the exam is it 
No, so you you sign up for the course, then you they teach you some important things about mm-hmm. the the exam and the the certification, mm-hmm. and then you have to go on your own journey, learning a lot of things in between. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, uh, while we were doing it, we had a lot of sharing. I had a lot of things I had to ask Lou because I'm. I'm from the scientific background. Yeah. Basically, mm-hmm. everything that I've learned about muscle and what not, injuries and so on and so forth, is always from the medical point of view. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But CSCS is a whole other point of practical point of view, yeah. which I am not used to, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to the weightlifting movement and so on. Mm-hmm. I had, I had, I learned a lot from this guy. Yeah. I guess that's when we became okay. friend, good friends. Just okay. okay. <laughs> um, the te- technically, <laughs> technically the, the exam, it was non romantic. You can take the CSCS exam on your own. You don't actually have to go for the course. Okay, okay. So you can I actually see. just register for the exam. Take it. Um, buy the book, study by yourself. The only reason, uh, like what Arvin said, that the reason why we went for the crash course was because I I I came more from a practical side of things. Mm-hmm. So if you you want to look at the movements, I could just like hands down tell you okay this is what is not doing right this is what is doing right um, Arvin came on the opposite side so that's why we both needed to attend this crash course because we still you know there was a lot of things we still that we still needed to learn mm. okay so you have more like theory you have more like practical like, yeah and, and, stuff, and, right? all, and because also I've, I've before I even decided to go for the course a lot of I asked a lot of people about it and mm. it's it's a very very tough course I actually yeah. went through the, the book and there's just a lot of Topics that you know, it's just really tough. Mm. Like yeah, you've got people failing it six times. Yes. Mm. Mm. Uh, okay, I was just about to ask. How much is it uh, to, to retake? Thousand five each thousand time. Five. Ooh. So it's not it's not cheap to exactly exactly sit for this. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not prepared for it, don't waste your time because yeah. it's it's not it's not like it's not like a day course where you just read it and you think you can go and pass because yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of things that you they read in the book doesn't come out in the exam because they take it a, f- a step further. They're yeah. like, okay, I put you in this situation. And what yeah. do you do? Yeah, how do you apply it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not just what is this? What is this? Let me give you like a case or whatever, no, no. and you just they, apply. They actually it. show you a video and tell you what's wrong. Okay. Oh, oh that was that what? was, that was so tough. tricky. Mm. It was like they show you the video once. Once. Oh, just once. once. <laughs> they show you the video once of the person doing it, and you can play it back. Once yeah, you can play it back. But the thing is, it's like you say the guy is doing a clean. Mm. Yeah. And you actually have to look at the entire movie because the the mistake is somewhere in between. Mm. And mm-hmm. that's the thing. You see, when if you look at a person doing a squat. Or a person doing a snatch, you can you when you say look at it and you say like okay he's not doing this right, but the thing you have to take into consideration is you need to know what their standards is. Yeah. Your wrong is their right. Yeah. So that's the tricky part for yeah. me because for me if I look at someone squatting I say like okay he can do this better, but to them that's not wrong. Mm-hmm. So see that's why you get thrown off guard. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. So but, yeah, talking about CSCS, um, so being a physician, the fact that why I actually took. CSCS was actually to treat my patients better. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, and frankly speaking, it kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things, uh, especially when it comes to dealing with injuries. Uh, it, it, it actually changed my way of management. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you see the outcomes of management when person is, uh, someone is injured. Yeah. Especially from, uh, I deal a lot with rugby players, uh, powerlifters, crossfitters. Their outcomes are much better. No mm-hmm. weightlifters? Weightlifters not so. Surprise. I had one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so either they don't, they don't get like injured, minute, or, or, or they just took two of them. Take yeah. it, it, it's either they don't get injured, or when they get injured, they just go to a GP. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe have like a national doctor, or whatever, right? Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've moved a bit off track. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting topic, but probably for another yeah, 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 another yeah. podcast. Um, so going back to your injury. Your butt injury. That was what, 2017? Towards the end of 2017. 2017, yeah. yeah. And then I took the entire two, uh, 2018 to re- rehab it. Um, but I didn't like completely stay idle. I saw it as an opportunity to work on my weak spots and I decided to venture into bodybuilding. Mm. I, I knew I was not going to be lifting super heavy, so I just thought, you know, you know I, was, I still need to stay active and I should... Look good. <laughs> this bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> I subtly. Yeah, it's a, it's a side thing. No, no, no I mean like um, <laughs> even before like going into any sport, I always take it with. Uh, I always take it seriously. I always know that okay, um, powerlifting is hard, but don't underestimate the the new sport that you're going into. Mm. Always show respect. So it it did humble me again, to know how bodybuilders have to really go through that whole diet aspect and training. Oh yeah, aspect. that's right. Yeah. 
But yeah, um, if I had honestly, if I had met Arvin much much sooner uh, in my training and competitive powerlifting, I don't say, I don't sound old. I sound like I'm really old right now. Like I've <laughs> yeah. like I've done thirty years. years of yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, if I had met him sooner, perhaps uh, my training on competitive journey would have been much more different. Mm, smoother. Um, yeah, because right now I consult him on a lot of things, and I do visit him uh, occasionally um, every few months to just get my whole body checked or blood yeah, work or anything like that. But w- what would you have done differently, though? <laughs> well, definitely see him first to get his advice. Um, not spend so much money on the other doctors I went to. Mm. Um, see what his approach would have been. Now, Arvin, you said that you you yeah you heard the first. Um, podcast that we did yeah so what did you think about what we were talking about in regards to injuries injuries uh, rehab the, the the doctors why why would the doctors advise me what they did and i'm pretty sure actually at some point yeah. all of us at this table have actually said seen a, a general like prep gp yeah and they've all, usually their go-to advice is stop training stop training <laughs> rest ice painkillers or something something along those lines okay um to be frank you have to understand that uh you know, years of studying medicine, mm-hmm. okay, uh, MSK injuries, uh, musculoskeletal injuries are not the biggest part of it. Yes, we learn about muscles, we learn about tendons, we learn about ligaments, and we learn about uh, some things about injury, but we, we have never gelled it together and someone has never told us, okay, this is how we deal with an injury, okay? So most of us know that if you rest, it heals, mm-hmm. okay? And obviously, that being said, if you have no idea what to say beyond that, you say what you know. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you an advice, and you do something, and I end up in the in court. Yeah, that's what that's what I, th- I thought. It yeah. has to be some legal reasons why doctors say that, right? right? Because that's considered negligence. Because yeah. you you never oh. you don't really understand something, and you give an advice, mm-hmm. and someone gets injured out of it. That's already against the Hippocratic oath. Mm-hmm. First, to do no harm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they, their best advice is to rest. I mean, to rest. So basically, if you rest, you don't get injured further. But why wouldn't they recommend like to see someone like you instead? They probably don't know anyone like you. Yeah, they probably don't know. Like how, how, how many physicians like yourself are out there in Malaysia right now? Like probably you know. 30, 35 mm. in the oh. whole country. So it's, it's, it's not much. I mean, we are, we are breeding more. Mm. But it's, it's not... You have to understand, when I joined the course, there's only four hours from... The yeah. uh, hospital that got chosen. We have three other private candidates. That's seven in total for an entire year. Mm. So you have to understand that the replenishing of the amount of specialists is not like an orthopedic surgery where you have maybe 50 or 60 of them yeah, graduate in exactly, a year. Yeah. yeah, we have like five, six graduate in a year. Mm. Why, why is that? Is it because the, our sports are not that big uh, or oh. there's no demand for it? Or uh, what is it? it that, that's a sensitive issue. Oh. Uh, so oh. I, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Uh, uh, jam into that yeah. okay because there's a whole other reason to why and financial reasons and so on and so forth right, okay. but with the current state that we are we, we are improving our country is going somewhere we are improving mm-hmm. but it needs a lot of work yeah. okay that being said when, when what Luke went through so what the, if you go to an orthopedic surgeon he's not going to sit down and tell you okay these are things you can do because that's not part of his education yeah that's right yeah. he knows that if you have a disc injury this 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 is what you have to do yeah. if it doesn't work you're going to cut it open and fix it and now we know that's not true anymore yeah okay uh, research has come out that up to 60% of cases heal by its own yeah okay so, so it's, a, it's something recent all this research that's coming out you see when you do a research it's not just one research you have the thing called a meta-analysis mm-hmm. where some mm-hmm. a couple of people do research then you read it together then you pile up and come up with a consensus yeah mm-hmm. okay, okay. <coughs> so now they are starting to see that okay if the person's disc injury is not bad enough if you don't get a cord equina syndrome basically what happens is that the gel comes out yeah. and it smashes the entire uh, the cord equina why we call it cord equina because it looks like a, a horse tail mm-hmm. Okay, and it presses the entire, the entire thing and you can't like pee and you have numbness down oh, your yeah. legs and it, that's an, a medical emergency. Okay. Just, uh, just for the viewers watching out there, I could pee. Okay. I, I could pee. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so, it, it was to that point. So, at Luke's case, uh, probably what he had was some amount of this uh, breakdown. Yeah. The, the, basically, the, 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 he did say there's a rim, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, the rim and there's a gel in between. Right. right. Okay, so that gel would have extruded a little bit. Okay, maybe to a certain extent, it, it pressed some nerves. Mm. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't so bad that he could not move at all. Mm, he yeah. wasn't like, like paralyzed. Yeah, mm. it wasn't paralyzed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that did not happen. Mm. So uh, 
now the consensus are to actually rehab the patient. We actually believe that exercise, uh, a directed exercise, can actually improve the back symptoms. Mm. Instead of leaving leaving it as it, as yes, it is? Yes, leaving it as it is. Obviously, when, obviously, when someone gets injured, the first thing you do is not get as then go and start powerlifting again. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But there's there's a way to guide, as I was telling Haris just now, there, there we, we call it pro, uh, progressive overloading mm-hmm. or progressive loading. You gradually you gradually reintroduce back the load as you heal. Yeah. Okay? Wait. <clears throat> Uh, I have a hard time um, wrapping my head around this. Like the fluid inside the disc, yes. the ring, right? So it f- uh, float out. Okay. Right. Okay, let's see. There's, there's two bones. Right. Okay. If you, have, if you have seen the spine, there are bones. There are, there are a lot of bones that make right. up the spine. Mm-hmm. So his injury was in the lumbar region, which okay. is the lower back. Okay. Right? okay, you have five bones in the lumbar region. L3, L4. So we name them by the numbers. L1, mm. L2, L3, L4, L5. So the most commonest areas is between L3, L4, and L4, L5. Sometimes L5 and S1, S mm. being sacrum, mm. okay? So between those, there's actually a ring. It, it looks like a donut, mm. yeah. okay? Mm, but donut. this donut has a jelly filling. Right. Donut. Yep. Okay? So if I actually took it out, it'll look like a donut rim with a gel in between. Right. Okay? Think Krispy Kreme, jelly donut. Yes. Jelly donut. Okay, so Sounds that, delicious right now. that yeah. particular, that particular uh, substance or uh, part of the body, which is called the intervertebral disc or the IV disc, is what acts as a, as a shock absorber. Mm-hmm. So when you when we call axial loading, when you put a, your when you take a, the bar off and you squat, that particular gel l- gets loaded as well, mm. and that particular rim is very important to keep the gel within it. Okay. Okay. So when that particular rim tears, okay, when okay. just, just imagine, right. imagine that a rim tears, that particular gel can escape. Right. Okay. And the way that your spine is designed. Is such a way that the most common area where it tears is behind. Okay. Okay. So there's if you're looking looking at the spine, so we're looking at our spine. We have a front, we have a back right. of the spine. Okay. So it it only tears at the back, and the nerves are running at the back. Right. Yeah. That's why it pinches. It right. Pushes. Correct. Okay. okay. So you have to understand the nerve comes down and it exits. Right. Because the nerve from the brain goes down the spinal cord, it exits mm-hmm. and goes to wherever it needs to go. Right. So when it exits off the spine, if the gel is extruding and the exit is not very big, it's like probably like yay big. Yeah. And the nerve is going through, and the gel is pressing it from the back. Okay. So it's like kind of chakit lah. Mm. Like, like, like how, how uh, viscous is the gel? Like how how hard it is? Is it? it it's it's quite viscous. Mm. It it's a very like if if I cut it open, it like kind of slowly moves out. Right. So okay. Now that thing is already pecah, <laughs> pecah uh. overflowing like uh. from the the ring. Yeah. So how do you rehab that? How how do you bring put the, the gel back yeah, yeah, inside? Yeah, force it, it back. Excellent. It okay, that is an Push excellent question. Mm. Okay. So <laughs> whenever something it's supposed to be, see that ring is supposed to protect this gel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not supposed to go anywhere else. Mm. Okay. When it goes anywhere else, it becomes foreign. Okay. Okay. Because you belong in PJ, you're supposed not to go to Shalom. Then you have Shalom. So okay. when you go to Shalom, the gangsters in Shalom are gonna get rid of mm. you. Okay, yeah. so that's exactly what happens when you when it extrudes out, it goes to a place where it's not supposed to. So, it's so it gets resorbed. Oh, okay. It gets basically over time, it gets eaten away. Okay. It gets resorbed. Okay. Oh. If you've seen some of the MRIs that were done, uh, they actually did one during the injury. Then a couple of months down the injury, I'm talking about five six months with rehab and so on, and you see the gel is not there anymore. Mm. It's gone. It didn't disappear. Huh? It was absorbed by the body. Basically, it resorbs. Okay. Now. The next question. So now you have less, less gel, gel inside the ring. The, the ring. Okay. So then, where do you? How do you rehab that? Um, because it says it's a suspension. It acts as a suspension, right? Both yeah. the ring and also the gel. So now the gel sudah tada. So then. Okay. Stop trading. <laughs> He's got to be a bit imaginative. <laughs> 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 okay. It's not the entire thing leaks out. Mm. Right. Like it's just a little bit. If you see, it's like a normal like a bulge. Okay. Uh. Okay. It's not a lot that leaks out. Okay, okay, so it's not damaging long term. Uh, in, yes, definitely, it's not long term, as unless unless okay, when the tear happens, it's a huge tear. That means it's a tear that's so big that the entire thing you can see like a, we call it a central bulge. It's a huge bulge that blocks off everything. That is quite bad. Okay, now, the tear is still there. Yes. Right. So how do you heal that? The body can do it by itself. Ah. Uh, mm. Just okay. give it. Time. God is great. Okay, <laughs> God is great. <laughs> A lot of time. <laughs> so okay, uh, so how does rehab help in in the process of rehabilitating that? That is a fantastic question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like 
everything else in your body how do you think you're squatting from 80 to 90 to 100 and so on it's adapting. not it does adaptation. exactly it's adaptation so your body has the ab- amazing ability to adapt to any kind of tension you give it mm-hmm. at the right time so that's why when someone gets injured the answer is not rest only yeah okay uh, we have heard of this thing called police where we the first thing you do is protect You know, mm. you protect. If something is, if the kahel ga your your ankle goes twisted. Actually, you put, yeah, I should explain about the history. That police started off as what rice. Rice, yes. Then rice, rice mm. and then yeah. you just keep going up, right? Okay, so rice was basically rice. Wait, you talking about police? Uh, what? We are actually. Yeah, 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 we start. We start. We start at the bottom. So we start. It, it, it was. It used to be rest, <coughs> ice, compression, rest, elevation. Ice. That was the all-time f- to go injury protocol. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Kaki terslew, then it's like okay, you put ice and then you have to wrap it. Up. So you always follow the protocol of rice. Yes, rice. Rice, rice. rice. Nasi. Okay. Nasi. Okay. Nasi. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so then, then we went down to price. Price. Yeah. Yeah. Then we came down to police. So police is protection. Optimal loading is the most important part. Mm. Then ice compression elevation. Okay. Mm. Okay. So we now believe that when you optimally load it, I mean loading it at the right time. At the face of it, whatever the face of the injury it is, so it can be anything from a small range of motion movement to a little bit of a weight, some theraband exercise, or some band exercises. Mm-hmm. Then gradually you start with empty bar, you start loading the spine, then eventually you move on back to what you were yeah. you were doing, mm-hmm. and, and gradually the body heals and adapts. Yeah. So as you provide tension, the body heals. As you provide tension, the body understands. Okay, we are dealing with it a little bit more. Let's start building a little bit more around it. So that's how muscles get stronger. That's how the your the tensile force, the, the the tendons and ligaments get better, and likewise for anything that's in your body, that's how it actually gets better. Warranted, the injury is not extremely advanced. Yeah. Okay. So when you talk about tendon and ligamentous injury, if it's totally torn apart, it's torn apart. It it will not automatically join back. Okay. Especially uh, unless it's torn apart and it's like just there. Mm. Okay. Mm. Then they, it has its ability to actually like put a hand across and try to. Mm. To pull so, right. yeah. so basically, yeah. what we covered during the first one, like yeah. the grades of injury, the grades of injury, correct? Uh, and then like so, so like an annulus injury, like what he had. Okay, to be to be frank, uh, if if you actually look into research, uh, about twenty to thirty percent of someone who's twenty years old, if I did an MRI and Fay right now, mm. he will have this bulge in a couple of areas. Yeah. But is that a problem? Are you having any back problem no. now, Fay? No. Fay, no. Fay doesn't have any back problem. Funny story. Uh, I think about six six weeks ago, I was doing one of my sets for deadlifts, mm-hmm. and then my back actually popped. Uh-huh. Right, uh, but because of all the experience I have, like clients and whatever training with this and whatnot, right. So I was like, ah, it's fine, right. So I still kind of squatting. It was quite painful in certain positions, but I just gave it time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't freak out about it, uh-huh. and I just slowly trained back to it. And I just got like a PR last week, which is like two fifty. Exactly. Yeah, so, so it's fine. So so like what what you actually went through was actually what we call a discogenic pain. Discogenic mm. pain basically what happens is the disc gets inflamed. It's not torn. It's just injured for a bit. Mm. Okay. So when that happens, the body's response to that is back spasm. Mm. So you'll mm. have the sudden back spasm. Yeah. You, you would have felt that. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Okay. Yeah. And as you train, you'll you'll feel it give way and sun it, it starts loosening up. Mm. Then you get better and you get better and the pain goes away. And I think that's what's um, missing from the current um, lifting communities. Like when people get injured, they they don't go back into their they don't get back into their training through a, like a systematic approach. Right. They yeah. usually like they feel pain. Stop. They rest. They do a couple of stretches because it's their rehab. Yep. And yeah. And then they don't feel pain. And then they, instead Backs of out. optimally loading, like what we just, like what he just mentioned, jump back in. They just jump back in. Mm. They straight go back to 70% or 80%, and then mm. it just gets the pain comes back, the injury comes back, or it gets worse. Yeah, I, I I still don't understand how optimal loading helps with the re- recovery. Bring out your book. <laughs> Terror. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, uh, let, let me just give my my um, my layman mm, layman thinking. <laughs> If you load your body, that, that means you're using all your muscles, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. your muscle tears. But that affects the muscles, right? That makes the muscles grow. Yes. Are you saying that by doing so, the muscles is actually f- fixing the the problem because the disc is still torn? It's it's healing by itself, regardless whether you overload or not. Am I right? Okay. So how does the uh, overloading thing help with that whole recovery? I I don't get that. Okay. See, when when it comes to healing. Uh, 
I, I can understand where your question is coming mm. from. Okay, regardless, like if you get a, like a cut, it, it heals regardless. Yeah. Okay, uh, but when it comes to ligamentous or soft tissue injury, so a, a disc is considered uh, as an soft. absorptive uh, um, machine in our body that requires uh, to heal if okay. it's injured. Okay, mm-hmm. so that being said, when when you just let it heal by itself, it will heal to its primitive state. Mm. Uh, meaning, yeah. what was the primitive state? Before you started exercising. Okay. Because that is, that is the inbuilt mechanism in us. Okay. Yeah, Which okay. like, like, like no yeah. DNA or something. Yeah, like you're that. basically adapting to not moving. Correct. correct. Yeah. So if say say if I you broke a bone. Okay, let's make it easier. You uh, broke a bone. Yeah. Okay. And after you broke your bone, say you broke your tibia. Okay. You broke your tibia. I put you on a cast for three months. Then took it off and like ask me walk. Mm. You will collapse immediately. Mm-hmm. Your bone your bone might even break. Easily, mm. but what instead of that, what I do is I take off the cast and I'm asking me. You start stepping with your toes only. You scratches, put your toe down, mm. and walk as you go. So that's loading. Mm. So according to Wool's law, whenever something is loaded, it is like commanded to heal. Mm. Mm. So the body feels the load. As it feels the load, it puts in more material to fix the thing. Mm. Right. Pam. Uh, okay. Pump. So as pump doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those are notes. As as you continue to load, it will continue to like build, put more building materials on it. Mm. Okay. And I was telling uh, Hafiz is now, uh, Haris is now. Sorry. Uh, when when yes. something heals by That's itself, uh, you're not directing it to heal. Like a tendon when it tears, like right. a partial tear or a, a grade one, grade two tear. Mm-hmm. Okay. If it's healing. It will heal regardless. If you just let it, let it be, it will heal. Yeah. But there was no instruction. Yeah. No instruction. Heals, right? uh, mm. h- where you want me to go with this? Mm. Th- that's what the tendon will feel. Mm. Like, do you want me to go straight ahead, or do you want me to go zigzag material, mm. Mm. or so on? Okay. Mm. So we have t- we have a lot of collagens. I think we have thirteen types of collagens in our body. Mm. Okay. So type three collagen is involved in uh, tendon healing. So is type one. But type one is straight. Type three is haphazard. Okay, so when you want to develop tension for anything, like when you're doing a pull, you realize your tendons actually stretch in a straight yeah. manner. Okay, they don't go in a haphazard manner. It doesn't go zigzag and it's pulling itself. It's pulling in a straight manner. So collagen type one is all laid straight. So yeah. when it's pulling, the tension produced or the force produced is optimal. Mm. But mm. when it heals with type three, it's not optimal, it's and it can easily right. snap again. Mm. Okay, so when you don't load, your body naturally goes into type three. Right. Okay. When you actually optimal load it, you're giving it directions. Then that type three switches over to type one, mm. and then what happens is you get a good, uh, a, a good type of tendon or ligament or whatever is being laid down. So like that for the annular fibrosis, annular fibrosis that's what it's called. Nucleus pulposus is the gel, and annular fibrosis is the mm. the ring. Okay, mm. so when you command it or you optimally load it, the right kind of materials come to the place, mm. and they eventually heal. Mm. Yes, it will heal regardless if you just let it be, but it wouldn't heal to its best state. Yeah, I see. Pam mm, da. Okay. Huh? Okay. Mm. So so likewise. So like, if you're a lifter, you need to optimal load it so that you can can get back to what you were doing. You not when yeah. you lift again and you never loaded it again. Like what he said, you go back to seventy percent. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna go give yeah. way. So because yeah. it's not strong enough to support exactly. all the. Basically, load. Mm. after he yeah, what he just mentioned. So if you do everything right. Uh, which eventually I managed to do. Mm-hmm. You, it's not the end of your lifting. You know, yeah. you will get back, and you will do it right. You get better, stronger. Which is why, like, when someone goes through something like similar, they always think, "Oh, that's it. I'm done." Mm. But what happens, in fact, is if you do everything right, you can get stronger than you were before, and that's kind of what happened with me. I was able to go much, much more heavier on my squats mm-hmm. than I ever did, and my back still maintained. In yeah. fact, mm. you felt even better, right? I felt even yeah. better. I felt even better because I took the initiative to find the right people, study the mm. right material, uh, do my own research, implement it, and yeah, along the way, you meet good connections. Uh, you meet people like uh, yeah. Arvin. You meet you guys. Yeah. You meet good like my angels, and then you just get better. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the same process is. The same thing applies to us learning too, right? It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Learning it never works, stops. and then doesn't work. Then you, oh, you adapt to it. I mean, exactly. I think I think a good thing to point out is that yeah, learning, like you said, learning never mm. stops. Mm. And even doctors who finish their masters, their housemanship, even now he still goes for 
um, about seminars and yes. mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. It's, always something new. It's, it's, it's a constant because the knowledge keeps updating yeah, yeah. Mm. things change yeah. like back then we never knew that when the disc prolapses you, it heals by itself we used to go in for a discectomy yeah you go and yeah, take it off yeah yeah but now we don't do that anymore <laughs> we, we are, we, unless it's really an emergency then you do it and like yeah. besides that we don't we actually try to rehab the person first okay uh, we are uh, we can go on oh, oh yeah alright new camera remember new camera <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> no uh, sponsors this time <laughs> so um, it seems like these new findings are very very important right yeah it is uh, so are there any efforts in reconciling you know what these findings that you have with the traditional uh, sort of medical knowledge that is prevalent in Malaysia okay um, if we are slowly getting there mm. the, the knowledge is getting out that's why we have big seminars and we have big conferences yeah. it's to update knowledge this is done by Yes, we have like we like we have the Asian uh, Sports Medicine Conference. Uh, I think it's a, a not biyearly, every two years once. Right. Okay, so that's when the updates come out. I see. Okay, so and obviously when you read journals, you get updated with mm. these things. So mm. it, it doesn't it it doesn't appear in our textbooks. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, textbooks yeah. probably written mm. once in five years or once yeah. in ten years. You know, yeah. so you can't keep reading textbooks like in our exams. It doesn't come out from a textbook. It comes out from journals because what have you read recently? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Because things are changing. Things are adapting. The, the way we deal with injuries are changing. How, how do we do we close the gap between uh, between a uh, uh, normal doctor uh, with someone with uh, your background? Like because you you go to all these conferences, they are all the same guys, bunch bunch of guys, right? They are not doctor, the doctors that doctor, we go doctor. see mm-hmm. uh, at the hospital and whatnot. So there's still a gap. I, even if somebody get in, gets gets injured today, goes to the hospital, he'll get the same advice. Get, yeah. How do we close that gap? I guess you gotta have more doctors that can deal with. Okay, frankly speaking, if you ask someone about uh, running injuries, probably you have more oh doctors yeah. who have an understanding about it mm. because it's it's, it's common. Pre- it's, it's common. It's more yeah. prevalent. Yeah. Uh, if you ask someone with powerlifting injuries, if you are, you told me that you probably when you're doing your bench, when you're at, at your descent, at the point where you bring down your chest, there's some pain in this point and that point. Not every doctor can actually understand right. that, yeah. because first and foremost you have to understand the movement. Yeah. You have to understand why it's probably causing at what point and which muscle, what is the stretch is going on, and so so on mm. and so forth. Mm. So if you expect every doctor to have the same ability, that's yeah, never yeah. going to happen. Okay. So that's why if you ask me, if you had a gallbladder injury, you don't come to me. You go to an <laughs> yeah, hepatobiliary surgeon because yeah. he knows that better. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's the sad truth or that's that's how it is right now. We have specialized. That's why we have specialities. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. A general doctor can deal with your cough and colds and basic MSK injuries. Yeah. Right. You know, you twisted your ankle a little bit. It's not so painful. You got better in a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. But they are they they have their limitation mm. and they know that. So I'm not undermining my GPs. Yeah. My no, pro- yeah. That's not the point of um, the question yeah. though. So so so, I understand that you you if you could met a normal doctor, you feel that if if you could get the best advice from him itself or her itself, mm. is that what you're trying to say? No, I, I guess, I guess a podcast like this one where we talk about this issue would probably help uh, wh- whoever's listening uh-huh. because instead of them when, when they get their injury they don't just go to a GP they'll go to the right person, right? right? So, uh, so that I, um, people uh, with injuries do not have to go under the knife uh, necessar- necessarily because now they know uh, uh, another option. The, the the problem now that I see is that people don't know right it's, yeah. it's like you said we're only producing six seven doctors uh, sports, sports medical doctors a year right so there's still a long way to go. I understand there's still a long way to correct. go correct there's still a long way to go and uh, frankly speaking like every sport has its own injuries and own problems in that sport you know, mm. you're talking about a rugby player you deal with concussions on a daily basis mm. that's a whole other problem yeah. so even in my field like currently when I where I'm practicing okay I'm I'm one of the few fellows who actually understands powerlifting injuries yeah that's true okay so yeah. when uh, we have worked a system such a way if someone comes with a powerlifting or a crossfit injury you tell me or you ask me so I will give my best advice for that person likewise if someone came in with an endurance athlete who comes in with an injury I'm not probably I know some things but I know someone who knows a little bit more, more. than me mm-hmm. yeah 
but still so in, still in the same uh, the category like, yeah, yeah. yeah so i i understand that uh if, if the general population if everybody's going to get injured and everybody's looking for a sports physician to yeah. find one it probably is never going to happen mm. you know it's not everybody has the facility to find someone that's true yeah. okay but obviously getting to the doctor first and probably if, if the doctor could assess your injury and think that okay this needs a bit more help then you get referred out to a specialist yeah. to a specialist mm. who probably knows this better yep. Yep. and but yes it's it's it will get better over the years mm. i think it will because mm. we are producing more we it will be the outreach will be better mm-hmm. and hopefully we can treat our athletes better or treat uh, not just athletes not all of us are athletes i'm 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 not an athlete mm. but i do do some powerlifting so yeah. i even i can get injured so right. uh, you know so yeah. it's uh, we, are, we are also treating the general population who exercises yeah. you know they also get injured so to give the right advice at the right time so that you know you don't go through 12 doctors yeah before you get to the right advice yeah that's true it, it's not fair to you yeah and i i don't think that anyone should go through that mm-hmm. hopefully we can minimize that or reduce that that kind of inconvenience yeah it's it's also it's also because these doctors are so like prevalent everywhere um i see it sort of like on a bigger scale a bigger picture right because of the language they use to the patients right they are a- affecting the entire uh, population of people because you tell this person like oh you cannot do this anymore because of this specific thing they're going to go tell you can do them. bicep curls though oh yeah you can do yeah you can do <laughs> bicep curls that, that's <laughs> it yeah. your arms would be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I what get, if, what happened you broke your back <laughs> no i get what you mean yeah uh, but with that comes with the the struggle right? yeah no not only just that uh, it depends who you going to see first mm. like look he knows me so the moment he gets injured he's not going to find a gp yeah. he's going to find me yeah. straight away mm. uh, not everybody has that privilege mm. yeah. yeah so hopefully that with knowledge with uh, good um, knowledge of the under- our understanding of your injury you know who to find or yeah. Who, yeah. who you could actually look for mm. and mm. where are these people situated so a lot of hospitals in our country already have sports physicians um mm. like slayang hkl serdang they all have sports physicians yes you can visit them mm. And probably get a good advice from mm-hmm. them, you mm-hmm. know, at least a better advice. Yeah, you know, yeah. the GPs are important, I, yeah, especially if it's a minor injury. GPs can actually do it. Yeah, but probably in more advanced injuries, you w- want to look for someone better. Mm-hmm. Right, you know. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, it's it's not that we want the uh, GPs to have specialized knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's just that we want them to give the updated, the correct uh, advice. You know what I mean? So instead of resting, they can just say something general like, "You can still, you, sh- you can still, and you should still be, you know, trying to maintain the range of motion, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Something blanket instead of just." which is the opposite direction rest yeah. or ice right it's more damaging i i, I guess yeah. i guess in that way uh, that's our job as doctors to update our knowledge and okay. improve yeah, yeah. improve the advice we give to our patients especially mm. when we're dealing with the the more active population mm. so i guess that's something we can improve as, yeah. as as doctors as well i suppose that's where zilfit comes in zilfit pubmed <laughs> 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 no, i guess that that's why podcast like this is important we, we i'm We're not putting anyone down. We're yeah, just no. saying that no, we, no, yeah. we have room for improvement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You yes. Know, we have to bridge the gap between uh, the athletes and the exercising population and our, and our, and our treating community mm-hmm. so that we get, you get better faster yeah. and you get back to what you're doing. Yeah. Because as, as, as we know, if someone is taken off their sport, especially if you're an athlete, it really messes up with your psyche. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, so, and, and that's something, and you know that depression is on the verge of, everybody is just, a lot of depression cases these mm-hmm, days. Mm-hmm. And for an athlete, I've dealt with that, right? I've I've dealt with a lot of athletes who've gone into depression because mm. of injuries, and staying away. The number of weeks you're away from training, number of weeks you're away from your game, it really affects not only your psyche, it also affects your job. Some of them is their jobs. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's another topic, So, uh, so, 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 th- so that's important. So when it comes to injury, <coughs> like, like what he went through, I bet he yeah. really messed up his his psyche as well. And someone mm. tells you, no, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. And probably at that time, he probably believed that it's going to be it's that bad mm. that I can't yes. do anything. And yeah. it really messed up. Yeah. Like when I had my shoulder injury, and no, obviously at that time I didn't know any sports physician. Yeah. It really messed up the fact that I couldn't bench for two years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no one yeah, told I me. Yeah, I was in a position too. Yeah. My so no one. Ac- uh, no one actually told me how to how to get over it. Yeah. I had to figure it out. Yeah. So that's yeah. when that's when my interest for sports medicine and so on actually really intensified because mm. I found out that we have this gap that's missing and how do we bridge that gap? How do we improve the outcome? Yeah. So he basically he went through the same thing I did, but on his shoulder is my back. Yeah. So he he pursued sports medicine. I pursued physiotherapy. And then I just 
figure out a way to keep training. To keep <laughs> <laughs> so Learn well, basically, all our journeys, <laughs> our journeys all like originated from an injury and being felt feeling helpless. Yeah, that there was no one to turn to, yeah. or the person we turned to, we felt weren't doing a good enough job. Yeah. yeah. So eventually, it spawned this. Um, I think it's both good and bad. It did create a much more serious drive for us and awareness in the, for the public mm. to actually be the people to out there sharing what we know and yeah. making sure that other people never go through uh, what we thing. went through. Yeah. yeah, that's very true actually because like if I didn't go through that, I'd probably be like, ah, oh, it's just to see a doctor. Yeah, especially yeah, like, like squat. Exactly, you know? Yeah. And it's... You don't understand, you don't understand that, that kind of process that the people go through when they have the injuries, right? Because there's so much more to it. It's not just the injury itself, it's the mental side. Uh, your perception of the pain as well, right? It's right. all affected by the people around you. And the people around you are telling you, like, oh, you should stop training, yeah. right? It really does affect you. <clears throat> and you see, like, your competitors getting better, yeah. injury-free, yeah. and then you're just there even more depressed knowing that, oh, you're, you're falling so far yeah, you're behind. Falling mm. And especially at the, at the time I got my injury, I was still very new. It's just my first year, mm. and I was so in love with the sport. And then this happened, and then... Not one, but at least two doctors <coughs> told me yeah, that I should stop completely, and I'm just like, <laughs> I think I think a heartbreak would have been better at that time. <laughs> yeah. Break up. It, it it was a form of heartbreak, though. Yeah, it, was. it is actually, but a heartbreak actually, would, uh, yeah, it probably is. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah so I I think um, I mean like what what Harry was saying it it's uh, I see that GPs are actually putting a little bit more effort because like when we have courses for the general population, yeah. we actually have courses that my department organizes for. GPs for people who are treating the general population mm. and they actually come GPs are actually making the effort to come and learn okay okay, okay. so so they, they're getting there they're actually trying to learn and know that they're actually people coming with this kind of injuries now okay. people are more active than usual okay uh, maybe you will find a w- one or two bad apples but that happens in every yeah, field every yeah. you know uh, you, you there are people trying <clears> they're trying but obviously you would not get the best advice but as what he said probably you might get a blanket rule of a blanket advice that steers you in the right direction right? Yeah. exactly yeah. and and hopefully they know where to send you to if it's more than what they can handle mm. and that's my advice to my, my primary care f- friends out there mm-hmm. if it's more than what you can handle refer out yeah you know we are more than happy to help yeah because it, it, it's someone's uh, well-being and I think it's a shared effort yeah you know, even with the physiotherapist and so on, it's a shared effort. We are, we are all trying to get better. Yeah, okay, I, I want to talk about the uh, difference between what you're doing and what a uh, physiotherapist yeah, yeah. is doing. <laughs> so we'll, we'll take a break for, for a while and uh, we'll be right back after this. Hey guys, we have a couple of seminars that we are hosting this year. In July, we have Zach Cooper, who is a USP, USAPL powerlifting coach uh, for 20 years. And in October, we have Torokti for a weightlifting seminar. So we hope that you register for both of them. Uh, the reason being is that number one, they, they have a lot of knowledge to share with us. And I think we definitely we can learn something from, from both of them. Uh, another thing is that with uh, if these two courses are successful, then we hope to bring in more and more uh, experts from around the world to, uh, to Malaysia. And I think that will just benefit all of us. So please register, the link is uh, in the description below and we hope to see you in July and also in October for these seminars. Thank you so much for supporting us. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 Welcome. Hi. Welcome back Hi. to Baba Junction. Uh, okay, let's just uh, get right, right into it. Huh? Uh, so what is the difference between a sports physician, physician and, a physiotherapist. and also a physiotherapist? Uh, simply put, I'm a glorified physiotherapist. Yeah. Mm. I can, and I can prescribe drugs. Mm. Oh. Uh, okay, but actually, oh, frankly sorry. speaking, is uh, basically a, a, a sports physician is the person who understands the entire uh, biomechanics, physiology, anatomical problems that an, a person or an athlete deals with. Mm. You're not just talking from the point of uh, injuries. <coughs> You're talking about a woman's menstrual cycle. How does it affect her function or mm, her, okay. her sporting event? So you have a female athlete try it, you know, those kind of things. So a sports physician's job is not only involved in just treating injuries, avoiding injuries is important as well. Mm. Okay? okay, so like, it's not just in isolation. Okay. Yeah, it's, of it's a couple of things you take care. Of. Like, like when you're gonna do a marathon, do you uh, do you know that before a marathon happens, the sports physician has already gone down to the ground, looked at the entire map, 
and found out areas where the water should be, where the point where we think injuries can happen. Mm. Uh, this part of the course is a bit slippery, so these are the points we might want to have a doctor on spot. Uh, we have an ambulance <laughs> on standby uh, in case a cardiac event happens. If a cardiac event happens, what do you actually do? So those are all my job as a sports physician. We have a chief medical officer like in a, in a, in a, in a marathon. Uh-huh. Like you realize the Putrajaya marathon was cancelled last year. Uh-huh. You realize there was a massive like storm and everything. Yeah. We had to shut it down simply because you, there are things that can happen and if it happens, it can go really bad. That's the call of the sports. It's uh, not the co- it's not, wasn't our call, but it was our advice. Okay. We, we as doctors know like if this happens, these are the things that can happen and it will go really south from there. So a sports physician's job not it doesn't only take care of injuries in the clinic. We also do sports coverage, you know, like when mm. you see during football injuries, mm. the player runs in is yes definitely not the sports physician, but then the physio runs in and he realizes he can't fix it and he calls the next person in and that's the sports yeah. physician running in. Yeah. Mm. In rugby, the sports physician runs in also quite a lot of time. Okay, so that's we do game coverage as well, and obviously there's administration job and we have big games like sea games. We have to coordinate the entire thing. Uh, with the uh, how the medical staff works, so that's not a physiotherapist job. That's way past a physiotherapist ah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rehabilitation is just one point of my job. Right, I see. Uh, yeah, so which I take very seriously. But I've done other other things as well. I've actually been the doctor for the Asia University uh, basketball championship, mm. the three on three. We took care of the entire seven days. We stayed there and took care of the entire game. Mm. Athletes get injured. Athletes get sick. Mm-hmm. They come to us for cough and cold. And mm. those kind of things So we have to treat them as well So That's all part of our job That's not part of a physiotherapist's job Right So physiotherapist is our Most important ally actually mm. Because injuries We deal with With physiotherapists a lot We work together a lot Okay But there are other parts Where I have to do it on my own Right and So, so w- would you say that um, You would prescribe The type of Physio- physiotherapy session to the physiotherapist or you just say to the physiotherapist like okay this is an injury da, 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 and he okay. will decide what to do okay um, it depends on what the injury is uh, in personally I always like I like to give specific instructions okay if a person has this kind of injury I'm going to do this 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 and this because uh, for this time of this point of time this is what I'm going to allow him to do or mm. her to do mm. And two weeks time I'll see back the patient And I'll say Okay let's upgrade Okay these are things You can include now mm. You know So likewise If someone gets an ACL injury uh, You know uh, the, mm. the knee injury mm. ligament injury uh, Most physiotherapists If the person is working A lot with ACL injuries uh, They will know exactly What to do I've got no problem with that But that's not the situation In our country yet yeah. You know You don't get that all the time There are some centers That you can yeah. But not most Most centers don't So sometimes I have to dictate What happens mm. But other things that my physiotherapists are very good at is uh, pain modality management. Mm. We have the ultrasound therapy, the tent, and so on and so forth. So when I actually at that, I will I will give them the liberty to choose what they think is right. Sometimes I will guide them based on the injury. Sometimes I will uh, tell them to do this and this. But sometimes I I would actually respect their opinion yeah. to tell me, um, doctor, maybe for this patient this is better. Yeah, and I never undermine that. I, yeah, I because they've dealt with that as well. So I have to actually respect their opinions yeah. as well. So I, I'm like, why not just give it a try? Mm-hmm. If it mm-hmm. works, well and good. good yeah. Patient gets better. Yeah, you know. So it's always uh, working together. Mm. For your case, mm. how did that happen? Did, did you didn't meet any sports physician? You went straight to um, a physiotherapist, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I so I went to a physician, mm-hmm. not a sports physician. I got all my MRIs done. I got all the information, X-rays. Um, I did did see. I did actually did see a, f- the, a, a physiotherapist, but it wasn't like a, a person who knew anything about the sport. Mm. So it actually got me more frustrated when the therapist, the physiotherapist that I saw, uh, tried to. I told her specifically. I got the the injury during my squat, and then she told me that I should learn how to deadlift better. Mm. <laughs> then she she tried to teach me how to deadlift on the spot mm. right wow. I still remember the physio center it's mm. still up and running I'm not mm. gonna name it um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't really blame her um, because it's because what they were taught um, in from textbook that um, you know they, they look at this they say that okay based off some statistics like really old statistics that majority of people get injured during this exercise so they quickly jump to the conclusion right without giving more thought 
thought into yeah. it, more like absolute clinical reasoning into it as to why um, this, 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 and this, right? Yeah. So uh, I saw therapist, and then eventually I met um, the sports, sports physiotherapist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they they knew exactly who the sport I was talking about. They I could I could tell that they actually were more serious, right? Because for the 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 sports therapist that I saw, he he did a test because you do special tests on athletes to identify or to cross out certain like uh, neurological issues or whether it's a uh, whether the injury that you're sustaining right now is muscle or is it a neurological issue or is it like so you have to do a lot of these tests mm. to start crossing out and then it narrows your focus down to exactly what it is. Okay. Right. So that was not the case with this first therapist mm. that I saw. They did do a few tests, but not the, all the tests that they were supposed to do. Right. And then when I sp- spoke to the physiotherapist, uh, the sports physiotherapist, I told him exactly the pain I was feeling. Mm. I, he asked me in very detail, okay, what exactly was I doing when I got injured? And then he took his time, really sat me down and asked me, and then he straight away did uh, one of the neurological tests on me. Uh, it's, it's called a slum test. It is, it's called a slum test to, to check whether the <clears throat> my whether what I was saying the pain running down my leg was it was it a nerve issue or was it a muscle issue okay mm. so he did it and then instantly I felt a lot of pain go down mm. and he didn't it's uh, he didn't actually like do much didn't move me much he just moved me just a nudge a little bit and I started feeling a lot of pain and then mm. he s- sat me down he told me exactly okay this is what happened and then what Arvin just explained to you guys just now about the whole annulus yeah. and everything that's what he did to me. So, but he explained it to me in a more, much more simpler term, uh, simpler layman terms. After that day, is uh, it's just basically what got me into physiotherapist. You know, like I felt so frustrated and yet so interested in the way he helped me. Right. So I, I owed it. I, I thought to myself that I owe this to other people out there. Hmm. So yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the protocol that he was on, yeah, but I'm would you have done it differently? Uh, uh, my, my point is this uh, Because now b- You said that um, Sports physician Your role is so much bigger Than a physiotherapist Right So my question is Should someone see Someone like you first Before going to A f- uh, physiotherapist Or is that sufficient I understand that For certain injuries Probably you can just Go direct to physiotherapist mm. But in his case uh, Since we were talking about it Would you have done Or would you have um, Given him a, uh, have, have him do Different things Than what he was Recommended to do Okay, what, what your physiotherapist did was actually an excellent job. Basically, um, when it comes to treating an injury, uh, what we say is history, exa- history taking mm-hmm. and examination is pivotal. That yep. means it's really, really important. Mm. I would not uh, dumb it down. I would not, it's more important than doing an MRI. Yeah. Because by examining him, I could have exactly said where the vicinity of the injury is. Mm-hmm. Because a proper examination will always, as what he said, rules out a lot of things. So the job, my job was actually to, as a physician, that's actually my job. Mm. To actually get a diagnosis. The physiotherapist is supposed to aid the rehab. Mm. They come. Mm. But obviously, this, this particular physiotherapist obviously did his job, did his homework, learned up what he can do and what right. he, to actually come down to a diagnosis. Okay. You get it? Yeah. So it's always, it's, it's actually extremely impressive when a physiotherapist can actually do that. Mm. Not everybody can do that. You know, when, when I've done an examination, I've found out this is probably the di- diagnosis and the physiotherapist does his part and realize, okay, maybe we can refine the diagnosis. Maybe it's a little bit more of this. Mm. And, and that's when, uh, obviously, that we are all trying to reach for a good treatment for that patient. Yeah. So, like, if, if his physiotherapist was working in me, I say, I've got down to, I say, I think it, it's a disc prolapse and he agrees that it's a disc prolapse because both of us did the same examination and mm-hmm. so on and so forth, then obviously our treatment will be in the same direction. Mm. Mm. Okay. And as, as uh, what we have mentioned before and what I've said before, I believe in exercise or in rehab. When I say rehab, is exercising. Mm. Okay? So uh, I would have probably done exactly what the physio did. Okay. Uh, but probably the physio would have spent more time with you because the physio, that's, that's his job, actually to actually rehab, help you rehab. Mm. Okay? My, uh, frankly speaking, my job is not to help the person rehab. I don't, I don't go do a one-on-one training. Mm, 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 mm. That's not exactly my job. That's why I have my physios on my allies. Right. Mm. Uh, but because sometimes I don't have the privilege of that or I don't think my physio 
understands my language mm. unless my physio is look though mm. <laughs> uh, probably he will understand my language mm. but my most of my physios don't understand my language especially if we're talking about people with his kind of injury mm. and mm. i want them to do a specific thing like i said no, okay no back squat for this patient but i want him to do front squats and if the physio doesn't understand how to do a front squat he's going to probably teach the wrong yeah. things to my mm-hmm. patient mm. and so uh, normally when in that case i actually get down to it and teach my patient myself mm. okay, okay? Uh, and yes that takes more time but to me the 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 patient's outcome and the patient's safety is uh, at most importance so uh talking about that so as, as i said if the physiotherapist if someone gets injured the best thing is to see a physician first get the diagnosis okay if your physician sees you and immediately does an mri you got the wrong physician mm. <laughs> <laughs> why because as i said history examination is at most important oh okay okay if the guy comes touch touch Okay, let's do an MRI. Mm-hmm. He probably wants your money. Yeah. yeah. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Another sensitive topic. You're going to get me sued, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what I'm saying is, is yeah. not everybody is going to spend time with you. Yeah. Okay? But basically, the, the, the eyes doesn't see what the mind doesn't know. If the hands have not touched it enough, they wouldn't know what it's feeling. Yeah. Mm. You know? So, like, well, what he did. If, if I did a slump test and he got a shooting pain down his leg, I would immediately have told him that his nerve is involved. Mm. 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 That But then, that still wouldn't stop him from doing some more tests. Yeah. Just to absolutely be certain. Because yeah. there's been instances where, okay, you do this test, it's a positive. It should lead you to this. But then you do a few more tests and suddenly they're all negative. So that, like, for, redefines your diagnosis a bit Correct. more. Mm. So, so when, we, when we do, when we examine someone, there's always the general examination, then you start... Like you start getting like, okay, I got five problem diagnoses. Let's start ruling them out. I'll do this test to rule this out. Do this test to rule that out. And if something hits along the way, then you know it's probably in this direction. Mm. Then you go on with other special tests that are around there. And it, like, even for shoulder examination, we have like 20 different tests to do. Mm. You know, so it depends on what injury you come with and what my test tells me. And that will direct my diagnosis. Doing an, exam- doing an investigation like x-ray, MRIs and CT scans and so on is to aid my diagnosis. To not reaffirm. To m- mm. Not only reaffirm. As when you do an investigation, one, an old physician told me this, if you're ever going to do an investigation, it should only give you two different things. One, it's going to change your diagnosis or it's going to really aid your diagnosis. Mm. Number two, it's going to change the course of your management. Okay? So if it's not going to do any of these two, don't waste it. In his case, when he says investigation in the medical term, it's usually in the form of MRI, mm. X-ray, screening, anything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, normally when we examine our patients, we, like if you have an ACL injury, I pull your knee and your knee comes off. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm pretty sure it's an ACL it's injury. I don't need an MRI <laughs> to tell me that. Yeah. Mm. But what I need the MRI to tell me if there is a cartilage damage along with yeah. it, uh, is that I, okay. I would have I known from my examination what the problem is. I just want to know the extent of the, da- the damage and what can I do further to help you maybe operate on it and so on and so forth. Mm. But if you're a person and you've got an ACL injury and like, I'm, I, don't, I just play badminton once a week, I'm like, let's not bother doing an MRI because it's not going to help anything. Yeah. I'm not going to do an operation. Yeah, okay. I think it's imperative that the questions, especially the questions you ask are very, very vital. Mm. Especially um, knowing whether you're the person you're seeing that the person you're attending to is doing a good job is by how well is asking his questions because it if someone comes in and says I've got a shoulder pain the patient says I've got a shoulder pain and then the doctor says like oh I'll put you through an MRI or anything of that sort a, a good doctor or a good physician or a good therapist would ask you how did you get it yeah because a shoulder pain can come from anything but if you told me I got a shoulder pain from snatching yeah and then the, the pain came about and if you again uh, to those people are watching or listening to this be as specific as you can with you, the person Scrabbing. attending to you because that will help them so much faster like you can get through the the, the, the history taking and move straight to the treatment if you're as uh, specific as possible because yeah so, so there, are now, there, are, there are two things right one is the uh, treatment mm-hmm. which is done by the physiotherapist but you are recommending on top of that uh, exercise right so who recommended you the exercises Yeah. Like how would you know Because you didn't meet Arvin uh, At that point of time uh, The therapist The therapist uh, Recommended exercises to me um, For Like Okay He he didn't ex- tell me ex- um, Specifically What exercises I should be doing I mean he did say that I could still squat uh, um, Like partially And things like that 
he was more focused to tell me the stretches and exercises solely for strengthening my back. Right. Yeah. That is the therapy part. Mm. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So for um, how would you then treat him? How would you um, give him the exercise protocol? Protocol. What sort of exercise that he can do? It's not the physiotherapist that's going to give you that advice, right? It's a sports physician that's. Mm. No, but the physiotherapist can. Yeah, the physiotherapist can. So, in, so in general, uh, generally speaking, uh, maybe I can. Uh, would yeah. would a physiotherapist in Malaysia right now have that uh, knowledge to 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 give? Okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not knocking anybody down. No, 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 no. I, I seem uh, to, I, I seem to be knocking actually, doctors. I, that's a, that's actually a very good question. Uh, maybe <laughs> I can answer. Please don't that. get offended. Whoever yeah, wants no, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Open discussion. therapists do have the knowledge to actually tell you um, the rehab protocol, how, how the exercises that you can do, but. If you ask me, a sports physician can take it a step further. Like they can get you the sports therapist. Uh, sorry, the sports physician should know your sport inside out. So does the sh- so should the therapist. But the sports physician is the one that's going to eventually get you to the performance aspect of things. The physiotherapist, unless he's a specialized in like sports mm, mm, rehab mm, and things mm, like that, mm. then it it's another thing in ge- in general. But right now, if you're talking for a general physiotherapist. Even the one who deals with uh, MSK or musculoskeletal, their job would be get you to first treat the the injury that you have, and get you back to before the state, before the state you injured yourself. Okay. Okay. So to put things simple, the type one. Uh, yeah, physiotherapist. Uh, you have injury. You go to physiotherapist. The physiotherapist gets you to the point where before you got the injury, which means the level of performance you are at, or maybe just slightly better. Depending on who you're working with, if you're working with a really, really good therapist who has uh, years and years of experience, they can push you further. Uh, sports physician get you. You see, you see them with your injury. They get you back to before your injury, but this time more. So they can take it step further, which means they heal. They treat your injury. They they heal it for you. They make you stronger, better, and faster to get back into the game. So wait. So the impression that I'm getting is, their um, sports physician. Do they have to specialize in a specific sport? For example, you want to prescribe powerlifting advice, right? To powerlifting uh, cl- uh, patients. That, that means you need to have knowledge of the sport. Uh, technically, it's uh, what we call it as a niche. A niche, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Everybody has their niche. Right. You know, so everybody has their interest. Uh, I should be able to advise someone who's actually want, who wants to go for a marathon. Like lately, I advised the guy who was actually going for an ultra marathon. Mm. You know? So my knowledge, I have knowledge on that adequate enough to actually advise an athlete okay but am I the best I would not say that I'm, I'm not the best in the country for that but I'm, I'm good enough but if it's someone who is a powerlifter my knowledge is far more in that because I understand the biomechanics of the movement yeah. and so on and so forth so my advice to that person or that person who's actually doing that sport will be much more comprehensive mm-hmm. okay <laughs> uh, let's say somebody gets I, your type of injury but from through a dip, different sport right mm. you're saying that what you would do is that you see the type of uh, workouts that this guy is uh, that this guy usually does and then you give you 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 know, prescribe him a program a training yes. right so a powerlifter would have uh, a different way to fix that kind of problem that's what you're saying because different sports have different needs i can't mm. train a powerlifter like a sprinter Right. I can give him exercises that was fit for a sprinter. Mm. I wouldn't be asking him to do A skips and B skips and yeah. depth jumps and so on because it, it has nothing to do with this sport. A sport specific, yeah. Yeah, but if it's a powerlifter, uh, if it's a, if it's a sprinter, obviously my my thought of uh, the the way I treat the person is a bit more different. If you've seen my Insta posters, if I'm treating this rugby player at the moment, mm. if you see it, the way I'm actually treating her is based on her sport. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking her to bench press. I'm not teaching how to bench press. I'm yeah. teaching how to improve herself yeah. in her sport. So I, I guess my question is this: If two two people get the same injury, they're both doing different sport. sports. Wouldn't the um, prescribed uh, protocol be the same? Because you're trying to. In the beginning. In the beginning. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Like what? He, like what he just said. There's there's an entire phase of exercises that you go through. Okay. There is the, always the general exercise. Okay, there's always the, the, the starting period with the protection and the optimal loading. Mm. Okay, there's always the general area that all of us are in. 
But then when you come to a certain period, maybe three or mm. four months down the line, then you start branching out. Yeah. You understand? The person gets better. And you have to understand the perception there is but once the pain is gone, the healing is not done. Mm. Okay. Okay. The healing, the pain, the, the pain perspective has got gotten better. But the spot specific bit hasn't come in mm. yet. Mm. So that's when you branch out. Yeah. So if you're a rower, I will then start branching out towards something that's more specific more specific yeah. for your sport. Mm. For power lifters mm. that for rugby players like this. So there is always that spot specific region that we come yeah. into. Because the end goal is to get them back yes. to where so they are. Exactly. So that's that's the end goal. So like you said in the beginning, you should okay, probably we'll they'll both go down the same route and then once they reach that point where the healing has already um, the pain has stopped and the healing process for the next phase begins, mm. then they branch out. But when they branch out, they need to do exercises or optimal loading that will eventually get them to their end goal. Right, right. So probably a powerlifter, would, his optimal uh, loading would probably be slowly like bodyweight squats or something of that matter. For a sprinter, probably a bit of side lunging, just a bit. So they have to um, what do, you call this? do the exercises that will eventually, uh, that's best for them for the and will eventually get them better in their sport. Okay, so how... So <laughs> do not disrupt my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you know when to stop? Where when is actually healed? Okay. Uh so with every every injury that we deal with, uh this what you're talking about is called return to play, RTP. Mm. Okay, so return to play or return to training. Okay, so uh uh for <coughs> kids we call it return to school. Okay, so uh there is a point where okay, say an expected time of healing. So like an ACL injury, we expect it to heal in, if it's just an isolated ACL, six months. Mm. Okay, at six months, we have a particular set of tests, a, a, a battery of tests that we will do to deem you fit enough to go. Mm. And if you hit the mark that you're supposed to hit, I will give you the green light to go on. Mm. To go on from here on, mm. then probably I'll see you back in three months' time and see how are you doing and so on and so forth. Then, and then we go on from there. The, is that why, like footballers, when they they get injured, the the coaches, usually, the managers will say that okay, he's out for six weeks because they know that that's the amount of time that uh, requires. Expected that amount of time. Are we yeah. talking yeah. a real yeah. injury or like ACL footballers like with ACL? Uh, you know, sometimes they they just say okay, he'll, he'll be out for three months. Standard answer, right? Yeah. Because they know that's probably mm. the yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, like most injuries, you have a, a standard amount of expected amount of time you expect. Mm. So, because if, if the more time you have away from the injury is actually how bad the injury actually is. Mm. Mm. If a person's out for a week, the injury is probably not so bad. Mm. If it's out for four weeks, the injury is worse. If it's out for three months, it's far worse. Mm. So, by that, just by saying that, I already know how bad the injury is. Mm. So, when you, that's, why, that's what you, they meant by, okay, he's out for three months, that's a bad injury. Mm. Three months is twelve weeks. That's mm. a lot of that's a lot of games lost. Mm. Will we ever get back to our original state after such an injury? With, with, with all this uh, rehab and uh, if if everything is done right, maybe stronger. Mm. I mean the the the, the limitations to uh, adaptation. <coughs> I have no idea. We thought the hundred meter record was done. It, <laughs> apparently it's <laughs> not. <laughs> so that's that's adaptation. The body is amazing. The body can do a lot of things that you you can. Basically, whatever you mm. imagine, you can do. Mm. So it, your limitation is you. Mm. So if you are going to tell me that an injury, obviously, if you've broken all your limbs, and that's probably going to be a bad. Or mm. your injury went wrong, or your surgery yeah. went south. You know, like like what happened to the guy you were showing me? If you had you have multiple dislocated, the knee dislocated, probably is not going to be the best. Mm. Okay, but if you've got an injury with a uh, with a good uh, potential for healing, mm. then why not? Back injury is not the end of it. I've torn yeah. my back. I've torn my shoulder. <laughs> it has gotten better. You know, it's gotten better. I think yeah. I've gotten stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah you, as you, were, you remember, I think you remember, uh, we all remember saying that when you are injured, you work at your weak points. Mm. Yeah, there, are lot of, there are a lot of things you can actually improve along the way. And I think when someone is rehabilitating, uh, that should be your focus. You know, keep yourself in the game. Keep your head in the game. You know, if you're if you're going to get better, it, it starts with here. Yeah. The, the, the battle is won when you you win it here. Mm. You know, so a lot of athletes, a lot of people who get injured, they lose it here first, and then they go down the road that they don't want to go down. So if, if like Lou, I probably he stayed optimal. Yeah. If he, he felt that he can get through this, and he eventually did, like what happened to you as well. Yeah. So it, it it's a state of mind. You you the state of mind is actually extremely important in a person who's going through injuries. And uh, we should do as friends, as as physicians, as as physiotherapists. I think that is a little bit part of my job. Whenever I talk to my athletes, 
Mm. I don't always talk about the injury of how your muscles are doing. So I also ask them, how are you doing? Mm. Yeah. How are you feeling about yeah. your leg? Are you feeling a bit more confident with your leg? Mm. You know, mm. that mm. question is a bit more on their their psyche, their yeah. mind, yeah. because so that much. that tells me if he tells me he comes in and tells me, Doc, I feel good today. Yeah. Then you know he's getting better. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, you know today when I'm testing him, he's gonna look a lot more better. Mm. He's gonna feel a lot more better, and and that's when. So the injury is not just the particular joint or the ligament mm. or whatsoever. It's the person. Yeah. Yeah. We treat the person as a whole. Mm. As a whole. Mm. So th- that goes for any ad- any any sport. Doesn't matter. Okay, Haris, I give you okay. my permission. Because <laughs> 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 yeah, I was just curious. Um, it seems like you have to. Do you like read about other sports in your free time, or, um, do, or do you just have your patients describe the demands of the sport, and then you just, okay, from there you can just formulate something to give them. I am I I I'm fortunate enough that I have friends who are interested in other sports. Mm-hmm. So whenever they see injuries that are pertaining to their sport, they kind of share it with us. Okay, okay. And uh, th- that makes me want to. I mean, I mean, uh, in, in the ACL injury is an ACL injury. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you get it in basketball, you get it in volleyball, you get it in football. It's, so, it's yeah. the same yeah. ligament. No, I mean, <laughs> uh, in the context of you prescribing the program, when when you start to branch out to be more sport specific. For example, for example, you said like a rover. Okay, what what would you have him do next? Correct. You so have to have familiarity with the movement and stuff, right? Agreed. So, so when if I if I'm not very sure of what I should, I I can obviously I can get him to the general phase. But when it comes to the sport specific phase, I do do my homework. Okay. And I, and the the I think the best opportunity to actually improve is actually ask the patient himself. Mm. Uh, what are the things you do in your mm. sport that uh? So it, sometimes when I was working the road, that was my first time. You know, so I've never dealt with rows. Mm-hmm. So I I know that what rowing is, yeah, the, movement, the, the yeah, cable yeah. row, but it's far more. So it, things <coughs> like okay, do you use your legs a lot more? Do you use your back a lot more? Then he tells me no, I use my leg a little bit more at this point, my back a little more. You, if you if you didn't know, rows can actually switch between your backs and your legs mm-hmm. when you're rowing with your with your power output. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have to ask this guy which is your more dominant power output. You know, so yeah, it's it's amazing. It's really amazing how they can actually switch on and switch off whenever they feel like it. Oh. Yeah, so that's 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 cool. fantastic. So so I asked him, and he educated me on on his spot. Mm. Uh, I I have obviously have to humble myself down to learn from what mm. he's actually telling me. Yeah, and uh, he got better. He's back to rowing. I just saw a few Insta posts of him on the, in, in in on water right. rowing. So. Uh, sometimes the best person to learn from is your patients. Your patient, yeah, your patient, your clients. Yeah, actually, my, I find my, that a lot. My, my patients are my best teaching tool, and mm. if I don't know something, I'll tell you. I'm sorry, I don't really know about it at this point, but I will go and read it up. Yes, I'll yeah. go and find out. That's so, a very good idea. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Right I'm, I'm not like, prideful. Oh, but it's this, this, this. Yeah, I'm not Everybody's prideful enough. Be, yeah. yeah, but we, we, we've gone full circle, right? About the doctors giving that kind of advice. Mm-hmm. You are giving the advice that we should be. Hearing right, uh, we do. Yeah. That's what we are doing the podcast <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are trying Kudos to get. To you. We, we, we are trying to get that that thing out that we. Uh, uh, that's why I'm, I'm still studying, man. Mm. I've been studying for eight, seven years. I've been a doctor for eight years. I'm still studying till today, you know, because the learning never stops. The yeah. When the learning stops, then you're yeah, just going it. to go down from there on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's it's always. I probably learned a few things today itself. Mm. Mm. I think to this point, I'm. I'm sub- I'm subscribed to like at least 11 different like uh, um, publications like uh, Mass by a collective mm-hmm. group of doctors and professors and like really knowledgeable people. They mm-hmm. come together, they do a meta analysis, like what he said, yeah. uh, a lot of research. They compile it and then they do a breakdown consensus. So publication like that, I'm subscribed to at least like 11. So every day, I have reading Much material. Suffering. You yep. know, right maybe now, not. Right now, it's it's not. Right yeah. now, there's a new research proving otherwise, um, especially nutrition articles. Those are the Best, you know. Yeah. Like people say, like sugar is the is the devil. Sugar makes you fat. Like, <laughs> oh. uh, no, you make yourself fat. Can you say that? <laughs> they're not. Huh? They're not. No. no. They're not. Oh, you are. The if devil. you follow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you follow uh, Dr. Lane Norton, currently he's doing a, 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 a weight loss experiment. experiment. Yeah, yeah, a weight loss experiment mm-hmm. where he's actually consuming sugar on his uh, weight loss experiment. So people often associate sugar with obesity. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's I'm a whole a other topic. That's yeah. a whole yeah. other topic. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay, I'm both of you are coming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit I'm probably his his, his uh, study or experiment is probably going to be like successful. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it's, 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 it's probably going to work. Yeah. It's going to yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably a topic for another time right yeah. now. Yeah. It's just injuries. And so so, three hours. so with, with, with injuries, like what he said, uh, it's, it's constantly updating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, all, all, all knowledge is important, uh, but that's because it's something we're building on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're, at, we're getting better. We're getting better. We have new interventions. We have now we're, we're doing prolotherapy <coughs> and PRP treatment. Yeah. And you know things that weren't present in the past, and now we have that. You know. Yeah, and you uh, mentioned it, the, it, the the psychology side of it too. Right? Yeah, it's, it's extremely not, important. It, it's very super important. I, I I I would give that to my lecturer who actually made it important, made mm. me realize how important it was. Yeah. For someone to lose their identity and how it affects their injury rehab. You know, so that that plays an important role as well. And and as I said, like things that like prolotherapy we never had in the past. So we athletes had to deal with it for a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we have things to kind of sh- make it a shortcut, and and improve things faster. Mm. And uh, protocols that are, are being uh, improvised and shaped and fine tuned, so that athletes get better faster. We don't delay things. We are not as scared as anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I know, like back then, it's like. Uh, you, after an ACL, you, say you, can, you don't move it for the next six weeks. Mm. Mm. Now it's like after two weeks, the guy is moving it already. After about four weeks, he already started walking already. And so things have changed. Right. We, ha- we have more evidence that uh, it's, it's getting better faster. So why are we so scared? Yeah. You know? So cool. that's, that's how things improve. Eh? The shoulder injuries and so on and so forth. You know? Um, I didn't know farmer's carries were important for shoulder injuries. <laughs> well, yeah. Now I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that. That, that, yeah, that's, the that's important th- thing is to remember that injury isn't the end. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. There's, so there's, even if it is the end, even if you think rock bottom is... The bright side is that if you once you hit rock bottom, the only way you can go is up. up. Yeah. Mm. Take your any deeper. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, don't go deeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I should have another question. Um, I used to go to the physio when I was in New Zealand for my, oh, my injury. Heresy. Um, I was just curious about what the mainstream um, rehab modality is. So when I was there, it seemed that every session I went in, it was just, okay, needling and then cupping and then massaging. And then this next time I was in, the same thing. Oh, you, you're looking, you're feeling a bit tight. Let's, let's do more needling. Is that the, the, the more mainstream thing or should it be like, like you said, exercise? Um, and the needling stuff is just, you know, like a one-off thing. Mm. And the mainstay should be the, the, the progressive overloading thing, stuff like that. Um, when, it, when it comes to dealing with the injury, depending on what injury we're talking about, mm-hmm. so we have, mul- it's a multimodal approach. Okay. There's uh, never, a w- there's no one way to an approach. You know, uh, there's, uh, there are cases where uh, we exercise, but at the same time, I ne- the patient is needled. Mm-hmm. Maybe once or twice, mm-hmm. maybe more, when, as required, mm-hmm. along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's always a combination of of treatments to get to the end point. Right. Okay. And and uh, obviously back then probably we had one way of doing it. Now right. we have a little bit more things that ac- that catalyzes the movement and okay. makes it right, a little right, right. faster. You okay. know. So so that has now improved the way we treat things. So we always go through a multimodal approach. Right. You mm-hmm. know. You know, not not just uh, like like if you're if you're having a muscle injury, I'll tell you, okay, why not if you got a knee, say knee problem, mm-hmm. I said, why not you start walking in the water? Mm. You know, yeah. it's not just stay there, rest, and wait for your knee to get better. Then you start walking. No, start walking in the water somehow. because you know you have some buoyancy. You feel lighter. You can actually mm-hmm. start moving already in okay. the water. So we're using a combination of therapy here. So, okay, okay, okay. W- um, so if you ask me, what is the mainstay? Mm. The the mainstay depends on what you're dealing with. Mm. Uh, I guess what I mean is. If you had to choose one, uh-huh. would it be, let's say, needling or uh-huh. exercising? Exercise life. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> because that is probably the most, uh, the thing that I can actually change the most. Change, yeah. I can actually uh, alter it or design it to the way I want it to work because the, the exercise is limitless. Mm-hmm. You, and the modalities are limited. Like you're talking about free weights, you're talking about bandit, you're talking with mm-hmm. dumbbells, with, right, yeah. you know, with barbells, with chains. Uh, we have a lot of ways to give resistance training and each of it has its own importance okay you know you're talking about different adaptive resistance and so on and so forth I and mean, that's for another day I guess yeah you know mm. so so the, the 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 modality that we'll use is depending on what injury I'm dealing with at what point I'm dealing with this injury and uh, along the way if the person's getting better okay now we switch things over yeah we mm-hmm. get these things in get these things in you know so on and so forth I get a, I got a guy with slip disc mm-hmm. he couldn't back squat but he could front squat so front squat right so front squat yeah. first mm. You know, he could front squat. He said, I had no back pain when I had front squatted. Mm. I felt good, you know. So I got him back to his spot. 
without really sabotaging his his his, his gains and his, mm. his strength mm, and he cool. felt so much better yeah that's cool you know so it's uh, obviously again if it's a very bad injury it's a different story but this guy had a back injury and obviously everybody told him to stop training altogether and mm. then he was losing his mind mm. he said I've not trained for four weeks I can't do this anymore mm. <laughs> and, luck- and, and, and lucky enough for him that his friend was my brother's my, my, my one of my best friend's brother right. and told him why don't you come and see this guy mm. And then I was like, okay, let's 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 break it down, mm-hmm. and let's see what you can do. So I tested him on a few things. He could do this, this, and this. Okay, let's do this first, mm. and let's see how it goes from here. Mm. So you know, you you kind of re- guy felt restored, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can finally lift again, mm. and so and it's it's really important for that person. So uh, it comes running as well, and so on and so forth. Some person, you tell them stop stop running altogether. They're like, what? Yeah, mm. Mm. no Crazy. running. Are you serious? <laughs> But I thought exercise was important. Right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So exactly. So, it's just doing it, uh, doing the right thing at the right time, mm-hmm. and it takes experience. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, this didn't come overnight. This knowledge that I have didn't come overnight. Mm. I, I did my mistakes along the way. You know, I probably would have asked someone to rest probably about five years ago. Five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So come back and see me. <laughs> <laughs> so that that has happened before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm obviously I wouldn't give the same advice now because I'm, my knowledge is improved. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I guess that's probably the biggest take home message here is for my physicians out there. Knowledge is key. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, knowledge. Learn from your patients. Listen to them. Probably they have something to tell you. Just just on the the, the topic of like kneeling, right? Because there there are some researchers uh, that show now that um, there actually isn't really any change happening. So do you think? Uh, the people who do feel better it's because they're doing something to fix the issue so they perceive that they're getting better the pain get theory yeah um, so it's like because you're doing something to make it better it has to get better right? and plus it's like sticking something inside you so like oh shit it has to change um, the or is there more to it than that like, okay um, frankly speaking I actually have seen like palpable Im- improvements in people mm, I, mm. I, 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 I'm not a, I'm not I'm not doing needling at the moment mm. yet because yeah. I'm not I'm not certified so in the government or in, in medical practice if you're not certified to do something don't do it yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, because you don't want to injure the person so mm. I've got friends who can do it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I've seen patients who come in like really tight hamstrings mm-hmm. and they have a lot of pain when a hamstring is tight it's really painful mm-hmm. to extend mm-hmm. your leg mm-hmm. and you can't walk with a bent yeah. knee everywhere yeah. So the guy just needled the patient's hamstrings, the hamstrings, and the moment you needle, then you get the patient to do a couple of stretches. We do a little bit of PNF along yeah. with that, and the patient's hamstring mobility improved. Okay, from that uh, session. From that session, okay. then maybe he comes in for another session. We needle it a little bit more, mm. and then the patient got better. Mm. And so that improvement, obviously, we didn't say that needling did everything, yeah, but needling it initiated. Together, right? Okay, and the patient got better. Okay, the patient had no pain after that. Is it? Is it because like a. Well, um, let's say let's say that that, that particular hamstring is it's holding a lot of tension yeah. right, uh, somehow, right? Uh, the kneeling, what exactly is it doing to that muscle to make it relax, like to release that tension? Okay, so now the, the idea behind the kneeling. Yeah, so the idea behind it, uh, if I'm, this to my best knowledge mm-hmm. actually. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, it was explained to me that when 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 it, a muscle gets injured or gets cramped up, yeah, okay, you can feel it like being knotted in. Protective, right? Yeah, it, it kind of becomes protective. It, get, it gets knotted. And you realize that we have this thing called trigger points. Mm-hmm. You realize that when someone has pain, you actually, some areas are not painful, but you reach that one point and pop, that pain is, mm. is really bad. Okay. So that's why we call it a trigger point. Mm-hmm. So a trigger point is normally what they say is an uh, area where uh, some pain, uh, inflammatory markers are pulled in that area, okay. which is okay. causing a lot of pain. Okay. So what they say is when you needle, it, it, one thing is probably releases those inflammatory markers mm-hmm. away and it actually allows uh, for nitric oxide and things that which to are good for to, to loosen things up okay. uh, in that area. Okay. Okay? But that being said, is not uh, foolproof uh, that it will not happen again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, it can happen again. Mm. But that temporary relief the person gets and then you couple it with stretching and okay. so on and so forth. Just yes. to get things started. Yeah, okay. yeah you, you get things started. But if someone's in pain and you have not relieved that pain, I've, I've had people, you, the moment you put the needle into a trigger point, it relieves the pain right, and right. the patient is able to, be able to move, then you can get him to exercise okay. again. Okay, okay. Uh, so there's like okay. a whole host of things happening, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. the mental side too. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, that feels better. So, 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 I can move. so the needling actually, yeah, like what Hari said, it initiated the thing. Okay. But it's not the end of the story. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. okay, right. You know, so like with everything else, like, you know, sometimes you have this thing called acupressure. It's something like needling but yeah. you just kind of like press it on that area yeah i've seen that work for people people come in back pain yeah, it's worked on me too i so. find a trigger point i just pressed it onto the area yeah. and the lady walked out yeah and i told her this is not the end you'll come back if you don't actually do your exercises yeah did she crawl mm-hmm. in 
Huh? <laughs> she, 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 she walked in a wheelchair, bro. Uh, oh. I, I, she walked. She, 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 she walked in and like, then she crawled in. Yeah, yeah. she crawled, she crawled in, out. Pressed it. She yeah. walked right out. <laughs> you, know, you know, a doctor always says, the moment a patient walks in, you already got half your diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I look at you, I know what's going on. Okay. okay. Yeah. You come limping. Like one time, I had one guy come in with like really straight face, and right. like this guy has a knee problem. I was like, no, he doesn't have a knee problem. He has Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, because he looks stiff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so a lot of uh, you realize that if a good doctor, he doesn't look down when you're walking. He's actually looking he's at watching you when you're right? walking in mm. because the assessment starts the moment you walk in. Okay, that tells me a lot of. So the, the way the lady walked in, I was like, "Do you have a back problem?" Mm. Uh, so you know, the person has a kind of stature when you're walking in yeah. with a back problem. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> actually, face. that that's a very interesting thing because um, I was talking to uh, one of my friends about this specific thing, and then because uh, do we have enough time? Okay, it's very long. <laughs> I think it's almost like 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this is very interesting. I think a lot of people want to hear about this. Um, so they go to see, uh, I forgot the name of these type of therapists. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, so they will sort of like touch you. They don't really particularly touch you with any pressure. But then they sort of uh, guesstimate that you may have a back issue here, right? And now I was trying to explain to my friend that it's not because they're actually touching you. But to them, they might think it is. It's part of their thought process or whatever. But it's because they were observing you, how you're walking in already. They could already tell what you may be uh, suffering from, right? So it's not actually the touch that is giving them the information mm-hmm. because that's sort of impossible. What, what did you say? Actually, the, with the back problem, no. The moment I touch your back, I will actually know. I mean, like, like it's stiff, right? Yeah, you'll feel like a wood. Okay, but what if the person like touches you on your shoulder? Like, oh, you have an ankle issue. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's the kind of diagnosis. Sounds like least, a magic trick. Yeah, yeah. The, the therapists are giving, right? I, but, can, I can't do that. But, I can't legally yeah. do that. <laughs> so they call it reading. But with oh. touching, yeah, there, 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 there is a there is a scientific aspect to it. But I mean, touching is a uh, palpating. They used to touching quite palpating. So if he says he has a shoulder pain, then we just do palpate just to see okay. whether the tissue around there is like is it's really really stiff or why not that's really what yeah, then, yeah. yeah so that's yeah. palpating but then, uh, with palpation yes you can mm, see if yeah. you have a shoulder problem I can sp- Press specific areas mm. specific for specific problems. Yeah. Okay. And I will know the problem is probably in this vicinity. Okay. But, but it's then not you like far off, like no, you touch no, your shoulder. No, no, oh, your, no, your no, left no, toe. No, is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't have those magical powers, but it'll be amazing. <laughs> okay. that, that would be actually <laughs> very <laughs> amazing. Touch your shoulder or your, your, your problems in the ankle. Yeah, or your kidney is not yeah, functioning. Yeah, your kidney is not functioning. <laughs> Just like touch your ears a bit, it's like. Cancer. You are you are cancer. But, <laughs> but I was just trying to get the point across that like um, all these little things that they do and say is to sell you their stuff, right? But most likely, or they probably believe it, right? They probably somehow know it's probably a gift that they have, like to mm-hmm. observe you. So that was my point. Like they're actually observing you walking into the clinic, and that's how they figured out what issue you have. In and your so, in your case, um, that the therapist touched your friend's back. Uh, no, they touch like somewhere. I can't remember, like on the on the head, or somewhere legal, right? Yeah, wasn't somewhere legal. Wasn't yeah. it sexual harassment? No, <laughs> it wasn't. It, it it's wasn't, so weird. It was though. like on your butt, like mm, starts a conversation. You yeah. have a nice butt. I mean, uh, your back's not <laughs> you, really. You get into a room, the guy touches you, and he tells you the problem is like okay. <laughs> that that sounds like that sounds yeah <laughs> like a lawsuit we think that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so there are a lot of these like uh, uh, treatment uh, therapists, um, and. My point is that like I want people to understand that like it's not some magic thing that you have to go and see this person. It's actually because they're actually observing you walk and move, then they come up with a conclusion of Correct. what you may have. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it's a similar thing to like uh, so. There's this whole thing about like foam rolling. I'm pretty sure you've read about it. There's a lot of stuff going on about it now, right? Like, uh, what are your thoughts or what are your takes on like foam rolling specifically? Like. Um, is it the actual movement of the tissue that's happening or is it just because you're doing something that makes you feel better that's faci- <coughs> facilitating you getting better? Do you know what I mean? I, I would agree with the second point, but you yeah. know they, that they, we have actually done a, the whole white study on foam oh, rolling. Right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and they found out that it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't but change the fascia, uh, right? Uh, yes, it doesn't. You can't, you can't actually <laughs> do anything with <laughs> the fascia. But if someone who does foam rolling regularly, they swear by it, mm. that yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. So it comes down to the person. If if it works for you, I mean, yes, the 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 proof might be something. I mm. mean, um, microscopically and physiologically, it might not have changed a lot. Yeah. But the only you can feel what you are feeling. That's true. Mm-hmm. And That's if true. you feel it works for you, well and good. Then it might work. Yeah. yeah. It is as long as it's not harmful. 
Yeah, he's not causing much more damage than what he already mm. he already had. Try it. Yeah. I mean, Why so not? If, it, if it works for you, if it works for you, so, good, right? so yep. I'm not gonna say that no foam roller doesn't work. It's just because yeah. some research says it doesn't work. No, I'm not gonna say that. There's not much proof for it. Mm-hmm. But if it works for you, mm-hmm. go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. Th- I I brought this up because I was sort of having a convo. <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, Asmir. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> having a conversation with this uh, I forgot what his name is his specialty Adam Meekins did you know Adam Meekins on Instagram no. uh, sort of getting popular now because he posts stuff about like the, the fallacies about uh, physiotherapy and people prescribing stuff to do and uh, stuff to help people that actually doesn't work uh, for example like foam rolling I mean it works but not in the way that people like to say it does right and I was actually um, sort of pointing out to him that it's also because uh, these people um, like it makes them feel better so that's why it is working uh, whether or not it's changing anything like physically probably doesn't but it's just the fact that they buy into it to me like the, the placebo effect of you buying into it is very plays a very big role exactly yeah that, that's that's a lot of treatment actually that's how it works mm. Mm. But the placebo the placebo feeling is actually like we you, frankly speaking they, even if I, you had pain and I gave you an injection of water and I told this pain medication you would have felt wow I feel yeah good. like oh man yeah. I feel good mm. because it be, they, I mean they have, they, have, they have done experiments like that and it actually worked yeah. you know so in, in, in cases of uh, uh, rehabbing with, uh, or getting your range of motion or foam rolling or whatsoever mm-hmm. you're doing mm-hmm. or voodoo taping and so on and so forth oh yeah that's right yeah, yeah so yeah, nerve flossing yeah. and this kind yeah. of things okay yeah. um, the proof to whether it extremely works probably is not so prevalent mm. but mm-hmm. to some people it really works I've tried people nerve flossing on some people yeah. and it worked yeah. it worked like, yeah. like, like they're magic and all that, right? you know it, re- it really works so mm-hmm. it, it, it depends on who you're treating and mm. if uh, if the person is responding to the treatment you know, mm. uh, not every treatment the person responds the way you want it to respond mm. yeah. but the person will respond yeah. so uh, again so uh, like things like that like using a, a, the ball or foam rolling if the it works for that person and if you think it actually works for you go ahead mm, go mm, ahead and mm, do it mm-hmm. you know just make sure uh, you're not doing things that's harming your performance yeah yep. you know some things you do that it's like static stretching can actually harm your performance that's true yeah you know so if, if you're a, but if you're a person who's static stretch and you still can perform really well then that's good yeah I've got no problem how, how about like uh, if you if you pull back like on a bigger scale and bigger picture right? like okay so it's working for these people and then they say if you have any issue foam roll no, you can't blanket rule. Yeah. yeah. There's no such thing as a blanket rule. Yeah. Uh, that, whenever that's, that's kind of the trend that I'm seeing with like foam rolling or any type uh, of like modalities for That's when it becomes an issue. That's when it becomes yeah. an issue when for you, the bigger population, when you, right? Okay, when you don't like, when you put it out like that and you don't put it in context, mm. that becomes an issue. Then people will think that anything that you have Got can be roll. solved with foam rolling. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's not only the injury, that goes with exercising Every, as well. Yeah. Like, no, you only can do conventional deadlift. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. that's the right way to deadlift. No, because sumo no, deadlifts no, are better no. for some people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and chicken. <I> think, <laughs> you know, you know or, or your stance for your squat. Some people have to do it shoulder width, some people slightly wider, mm. some people yeah. some, extremely some wider. No, so, so it's, it's dif- you cannot just blanket it. Okay, this is how it's supposed to be done and yeah. this is how it's going to be done. No, it, do- it doesn't work that way. Mm. Not today. You know, yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so there's always a range. Even even if you take a blood examination, for for instance, there's not like your hemoglobin has been fourteen point five. No, it's no such thing. No, yeah. It mm-hmm. has. It is always a range. There's a normal range. Yeah. As long as you're in that normal range, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So that goes for everything as well. There is a range. You yeah. know. Yeah. For, so for treatments like that, if you're in the range, you're doing well in that range. And it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Just don't I go around and start preaching. Preaching about it, right? That's yeah. correct. Mm. Don't don't force like it's like any other. It's like kind of like religion, you know. Mm. Uh, we all have our own religions, and if you try to force your religion onto someone else, it's not it's not it's, it's not going to end well. Yeah. You know? Are you looking at me, man? <laughs> 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 yeah. Why are you looking at us? Yeah, <laughs> you've got a beard too, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. No, yeah. So, so we, we don't we don't apply blanket rules. Yeah. Mm. You know, we we can say that it probably works. Yeah, I probably for me, yeah. it's that you can try it. If it doesn't work for you, then maybe you can try something yeah. else. But right. this worked for me. And that's how normally you spread the knowledge, actually. I mean, actually it worked yeah. for me. You can try it. Yes. If it doesn't work, yes. then That's a better way yeah. to say it. So yeah. spreading yeah. the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think like, okay, here are the facts. Um, mm-hmm. If someone tells me, okay, da, 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 and I say, okay, I present them, here's the facts. 
interpret it how you choose but mm. if you feel at the end of the day if it helps you and you feel good then continue yeah by all means continue yeah. it's yeah. not hurting you it's not hurting me mm. it's sure it's not hurting anyone else but the minute you tell me that oh this will help with your back pain it's only four hundred dollars okay <laughs> now you now you're really just, yeah now you're doing something mm, yeah now you're really just doing something <laughs> yeah all right i think well, I think, yeah, uh, I think that's our mm. role we should educate yeah wow. i think we've Gone way, way overboard. Past. Yeah, I think yeah. we need to split this into it, yeah. two parts. It's, yeah. It is so juicy in this talk. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, and I, I, there's a lot more that Wait, uh, we, we can talk about. Yeah. Until <laughs> we get nutrition, a lot of people are going to be upset. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we should. Sure. Yeah, so we we, we'll, we'll do it one day. But I, I think mm-hmm. we'll probably <laughs> just end the here. podcast here. Before I continue. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, thank you Luke and uh, Arvin for, yes, for coming to the thank show really this, good this, yeah. this has stopped the last podcast uh, in terms of <laughs> yeah. information and things that I've learned and duration mm. and I hope that duration. people yeah, and, uh, and I hope PR. people out there have learned as well always getting better um, oh by the way if you guys out there are looking for a sports solution you can find him at his Instagram mm-hmm. yeah. at what is it I think it's, I, I get you it. Like <laughs> what? Do you not know your own Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think it's A A R V N. Okay, it's a double N. And we'll put it in the description. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah, put it in the description. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's A A R V I N N R A J. Okay, Luke, do you want to also say where people can find you? Uh, at Luke Lango Powerlifting. All right. All right. My, my Instagram was made by my wife. So ah, <laughs> that's why you don't know, right? Ah. <laughs> All right, guys. She's gonna listen to this, by the way. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks again for coming by. Uh, thank we you. Really appreciate Thanks. Thank you for having us. I hope to. I hope to see you guys again. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I was being serious when yeah. I want you yeah, guys to yeah, come definitely, back. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Probably, okay. but uh, somewhere down the line, uh, I think other people will also. You have a, like a good guest list of people that want to come on board your talk. So probably yeah. after those people. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. So, all right. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Hi. If you're interested to be on the podcast, send an email to info at zilfit.com.my. Alternatively, you can just give me a call at 012-2361. We can talk about anything. If you want to promote your products, if you want to promote yourself, bring it on. See you on the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on. If you like the video, hit the like button and leave a comment. We're also on Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook. The links are in the description. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.